Ed Smith's got something else going on, something a little different. So I'm going to bring you along. We're going to go talk to him. Here we go. Well, that looks a little different. Ed, what are you into here? Oh, the transmissions. Transmissions. I, I love doing early transmissions. Okay. I've been doing them since I was probably, I don't know, 16 or 17 years old. I, so I, I, I know a little bit about everything, but not a whole lot, maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. So anyways, this particular one's a 350 Chevrolet transmission. It's up to late models. 71, 2s, and 3s like that. There's a million of them. Some people might call it a THD 350. Yeah, a Turbo 350. Okay. And the 400 is about just like it. Uh -huh. So anyways, some of the problems we're having here, this is, I've been two or three, uh, a month ago I sent four with four, four of our motors, four transmissions, all rebuilt, sent them overseas, some foreign country. Wow. And ah. we shipped them all over there, tor torque rivers, everything. Wow. And those, I put new pan gaskets on them and new dipsticks, so they look like brand new transmissions. And we always put a little shift kit on them. Yeah, right. So we're talking about shift kits a little bit. I've been doing transmissions since I went to Chrysler School in 1959. Okay. And then there, Chrysler had that 727 aluminum transmission. That torque flight. Torque flight. Yeah. And they were drilling holes in them and cut notches out. So they reverse shifting. And you are manual shifting transmissions. And I made a few of them. Okay. So if you put it in low gear, that was high gear. Second was second. And drive was low gear. Why would you do that? Well, that's just the way they did when they cut those notches in the valve body. Cut some of these holes in the valve body. Okay. They drilled holes in them. And and made this shifted backwards, but they were positive shifting. If you put them in second gear, they stayed in second gear. Oh. All the time. So you can run it as many RPMs you want. They would never so shift. So that's why it would never automatically take over. It was not an automatic, it was just solid shift transmission. Yeah. Okay. And then after that, I came to Arizona, and uh, that was a shift kits were not really available. Oh. So there's another guy here in town, Al Young. Him and I got together and spent a lot of time yeah. taking the valve bodies and with all the holes and stuff in them and traced them valve bodies. So years ago, we printed it by hand, copied the things, and then by hand wrote out the shift kits. Really? With a pencil. I have copies of them. We're not going to go get them. I have copies written out by pencil. Well, how would you figure it out? Well, it's just common sense. Okay. So we left some balls out, the steel balls out, and did, did different things to them and blocked the valves, the pressure relief valve and stuff like this to get them to work good. And sometimes you get to drill a hole and the oil happens to go to a to a clutch and you got a lot of oil and it shifts real good. You got to get that oil out of that clutch too when it shows in the next gear. Okay. So you can't bottle it, bottle it. But we printed those things. We wrote them out by hand. Okay. Then the next section, we had somebody type them out with a typewriter. Now you're getting fancy. And copy, copy those. So I still have some of those. Okay. That's the early C4s, C6s, Turbo 400s. And, and yeah. actually, just like the Turbo 400 transmission, when they first made it, uh, that was the worst transmission show they ever made. Really? Yes. They had more comebacks per transmission they sold than any other transmission until the race car guy got it. Well, what were they doing wrong? Uh, just the, the, the engineering of it, it was good for them. Okay. But as soon as we got it, the hot rod people, we started drilling holes in it. <laughs> and made it the best transmission. <laughs> it really did. And there's, there's Governor Springs, you change the Governor Springs so they don't swing out so much. And that's something else. Now. But this particular one, we'll get back to today's. What's, yeah, what's here. happening today? Yeah. This one I tore apart because I'm going to do two for a couple. An old guy up here that. I do transmissions for him, and he just wants to put them on the shelf, and someday he'll use them. We put shift kits in them and rebuild them. Okay. I think he wants me to do that before I die. So <laughs> I've done transmissions. But this particular one, we took it apart, and somebody has put stop leak in it or something. It's okay. It's difficult to get it apart. Uh -huh. Usually it slides apart. And then it attacked the seal. Oh, boy. And the seal looks like a rubber worm. Yeah, that does. And it should be nice and stiff. Okay. Yeah, that's really different. Yeah, it's really different. So whatever this stop leak is, attack the seal and actually ruined it. Not necessarily ruined, but it balled it up and expanded it. Okay. It expanded it so much, it won't shift. Really? The seals, like putting two seals in one groove. 
That's what this one is. Wow. It really ruined the transmission. So it, it softened so, it up like crazy. Yes, and expanded it okay. to where it can't, it can't work. I A see. normal seal is like this, and we'll get into that. Yeah. I've done so many of these things. And my friends, uh, we did some research years ago. I'm again some of my friends here, here in town have called me and said, Hey, Ed, the transmission need overhauled because uh, it won't start up in low gear in the morning. It won't oh, yeah. move. So I said, Well, the seal, if the transmission's got 100,000 miles on it, it's been soaked with transmission oil and cooled off, soaked the transmission maybe a thousand times. Right. So now it's got a layer of oil on it, dried. Okay, so it's kind of like varnish, right? Varnish, exactly yeah. right. Uh -huh. It's got an oil varnish. So, and if the seal become hard then. But the seal's still there. Yeah. So I tell them, my friends will last forever, put a, a pint of lacquer thinner, pour it down the transmission. Like lacquer thinner from the hardware store? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Let it set, start up and run it. You start it set and run for half an hour. Uh -huh. So it circulates in and get in and drive the car. And then try it in the morning. So it worked perfect. Really? Because it, the seal's still there. Nobody robbed it. Nobody took chunks out of it. Uh -huh. As soon as you got that oil off of it and that varnish or like paint, yeah, hundred thousands of coats of paint, where well, the seal's still there and it's flexible, seals up and runs fine. So you're saying that lacquer thinner attacked the outside edge or whatever, That's the right. outside of the seal, but inside the seal was fine. It didn't hurt the seal at all. Right. Yeah. Okay. And same way with the front seal and the transmission, the cork cover is a little bit out around. Uh -huh. And so when it goes out around, it goes around in a circle a little bit and the seal becomes hard and it, the seal, is, um, it enlarges the seal because it moves around and around an oblong circle. Okay. So as soon as you put the ad additive in there, it softens the seal back up, the seal becomes pliable, seals against the torque cover and it stops it goes, the leak. And it goes back in place where it's yeah, supposed it to be. Yeah, it goes back to where it was before, yeah. Same ah. thing, a guy rebuilt it. So this particular one, it was quite a time getting it apart uh -huh. because it just didn't slide apart like normal. They had to pound on and beat it on a little bit. So like something, this. somebody put something in it. Yeah. And this particular one then, uh, I checked and, and this is one of our cases we did clean it all up here and get ready to great. Put, put it, assemble it back together again, clean yep. all the parts, assemble some of the clutches and, and place this up and make sure the clearance is just right on them. I think this one, somebody who ever rebuilt it last time, left the clutch plate out. So it had about a quarter inch of clutch slop and the push plate. And they usually have, should have maybe 40 or 50 thousandths okay. clutch slop. So it took that piston longer to apply. Right. So we can see that whoever did it didn't do a very good job of rebuilding So there's normally like, what, eight or nine clutches in it or, or something? Four. Or four, okay. Four, yeah. Four is normal, three sometimes. Okay. And then uh, in this particular one, I just... To, we always save the old gasket, uh -huh. like that we that we get out of the transmission because that's what it was in it before and it, it looks good. Yeah. And then I, this guy that had this bought a kit repair kit for it, master kit. So I get the gaskets out of the master kit for this transmission and they don't match the old. Oh my goodness. And I never seen gaskets like this one before in my whole life. The holes don't match up, and every time you do something like this, you have to look up and yeah, make and sure, actually right? make sure all the holes line up. It looks similar to the one that you just took out. Right. And this one here has got a whole ear off over here. Oh this my gasket God. don't even don't even it, come it's up. It's missing that whole piece. The whole piece, yeah. Wow, so that's like for the wrong transmission. This brand almost. new gaskets in this kit that I'm not going to use. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll go buy other gaskets. So, so that's you have to be careful with that. Anytime you repair something, especially these transmissions, and the people who manufacture the kits. Yeah. Uh, that make sure everything matches because you don't. If it don't, you can't expect it to work. Yeah, maybe make sure it all matches up before you start anywhere, right? Absolutely, absolutely. every piece, make sure that it does what okay. you're familiar with and make sure it will work. So if the yeah. uh, seal was so crusty, was there crustiness somewhere else in the transmission? Not really. Okay. It probably is in the torque converter. Okay. We're not going to never use a tor use torque converter. Really? We send them out and have them rebuilt. They flush them all out and clean okay. them. Okay. Yeah. It's not worth the trouble using an old one. An old not, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, that's I see. Thing, yeah. So what's happening, Ed? What are you doing? We're just uh, putting a little air in these holes. This is where the, all the transmission goes. All the oil goes in different places. And somebody asked me the other day, how come you have all these holes in here? Because sometimes these channels do the same thing. They have a ball check. 
okay. little steel ball that stops it when it goes into second gear. And then the ball goes back the other way, going into high gear. So there's oil presses. So we put air, air in some of these to make sure they work. Okay. And make sure that they work before you put the transmission together. Okay, yeah, you don't and, want to start stacking parts on there if it's not working. Yeah, that's right. So all you can, all these you can air check. Okay. With, uh, some of these holes here with the air gun. Uh -huh. You just press them and find out exactly if it leaks or not. You need to do that before you put it together. Yeah. Makes sense. So that's okay. one of the things we did. See, there. you say it's common sense as soon as you explain it, but before you explain it, nobody knows. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, good. Here, um, there's a cushion here. Okay. It's a little servo that goes in here, yeah. and that's high gear. Oh. So let's say uh, the, the oil goes down a channel and goes over this thing to this chamber with spring loaded. So as the grandma shifts it, the oil goes over in the spring, has to tighten the spring up and kind of cushion like a pillow. Oh. It makes it shift nice. Nice and soft. Yeah, nice and soft. So we take that thing out and throw the spring away. <laughs> yeah, we want the piston to stay there in one position. Okay. So that channel is full of oil. Uh -huh. So now when it shifts, it shifts good, nice and firm. Right. And the one on the outside of the case is for second gear. And we'll leave that spring. It was a big, heavy spring about this long. Okay. Heavy. So huh. we'll leave that out. And I you know, I usually do cut a piece of electric conduit pipe, two and a quarter inches long. And we put that in that hole instead of the spring. So the valve don't go back and forth. It stays it in holds it in yeah. place. Another little uh, transmission trick by yeah. Ed Smith. And you can do all kinds of things with leaving the springs out and, and make it shift and whatever else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or, yeah. Excellent. It's kind of interesting. It's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Love it. So. Cool. Well, thanks for showing us, okay, Ed. Yeah. That is awesome. Okay. Good. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks again for watching, subscribing, making comments. If you have questions for Ed related to this video we just did on automatic transmissions, go ahead and write your comments in. I'm sure we will work them into an upcoming episode of Ask Ed. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon.